Well, good morning to all of you and welcome back from spring break. You have been literally all over the world in a variety of different communities doing a variety of things and now you're back. And uh, it's amazing how quickly the year will go from here. I tried to do a little counting and I think there are 29 days of class left. And so those of you that are needing to get serious, it's time. Uh, the reality is I don't want you to peak too early, but I don't want you to peak too late either. 29 days. If you are a senior, you have only 39 days of college left. That's great in some ways. And you're going to have an exciting time graduating on this stage in a few weeks. It's also somewhat sobering as you look out at what will now be the rest of your life. You'll go to grad schools all over the country. You'll take jobs all over the world. You will forever be a part of this community. But in 39 days, your presence here will probably change. Great to speak to you. I love the opportunity to come every now and then and share a little bit. This will not be a typical chapel sermon. It really is something that I hope is a little bit more informal and gives me a chance just to share with you some things about the university. Obviously, the setting today is pretty different. Uh, we're all set up for a concert tonight, the Charlie Daniels Scholarship for Heroes concert. And this will be, without a doubt, uh, the best country concert in Nashville that's absolutely free going on this evening. Country legend Lee Greenwood will be here. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the group, the Graskills will be here. Uh, really superstars Clint Black and Kelly Pickler will be here. And there will be a special guest tonight, and I can't tell you who it is. I can't tell you who it is because the people who manage this artist believe if the word got out to you this morning and then to the Nashville community, by the time tonight came, there wouldn't be room for you at the concert. I can tell you that two years ago, the special guest was Rascal Flats. I can tell you that last year, the special guest was Jason Aldean the male vocalist of the year in 2014. And I can tell you that the special guest tonight has been nominated for multiple uh, country music awards and will be on CBS to receive those in just two weeks. So if you've got the night, come to Allen Arena. Let's celebrate our veterans. Let's celebrate and participate in this concert uh, that really brings together a community of people who want to see them successful come and be a part of things here. One of the things I need to do occasionally is to thank you. Uh, and sometimes as I thank you, I'm thanking you for things and I don't really know how to thank you, but I somehow feel like I ought to be thanking you. Uh, I need to thank those who came several weeks ago and decided that for a project in the business college, what they should do is create some t-shirts, some Arlo t-shirts. <laughs> And I need to thank you because I don't know why you'd buy one. Uh, I don't know why you'd invest in this. This is not the product I'd, I'd base a business on. Uh, but so many of you bought them, they had to order some more of them. And I want to thank you for doing that in spite of your judgment. Uh, and I want to thank you for keeping me from having to buy the entire inventory <laughs> that I would have felt like I had to buy if this business project was an abject failure. And so because you have done that and you so generously invested, if you have one of those shirts and you wear it any time this week and I see you, I'll buy you free coffee at Starbucks, okay? So thanks for being a part of that and uh, thanks for letting us have a little fun with it. I also need to thank some others of you and I don't know who you are. Uh, and so you may sit here and those next to you may be responsible, but I understand there's a new Wikipedia page and that you, through your tremendous generosity, have actually redone my profile. <laughs> uh, and, and you've done so many things in that profile, I really can't correct them all, but I thought I would thank you and, and just share with you a, a couple of modifications to those profiles uh, that uh, we might talk about uh, this morning. 
Uh, one of them, you said that I was a 1996 graduate of a culinary arts school and that I, I, I received my degree after the instructors tasted my prize-winning recipe. It was slap your mama jimbailalia or something like that. I need to let you know that's not true. <laughs> while I love a good meal, and, and, and while I can tell you where to get a good meal in most every major city in the country, I actually flunked out of culinary school after a recipe that I call, slap your buns, hot grilled salmon. <laughs> anyway. Wikipedia also says this. It says that unlike most humans, they have discovered that my body is made up of 75% Pepsi. <laughs> now, most of you sitting there that are in science know that your bodies are made up of about 75% water, but, but they say mine is made up of 75% Pepsi. Well, I, I, can't, I can't deny, nor will I confirm that I drink Pepsi, and I can't deny, nor will I confirm, that I've spent nine years trying to get Coca-Cola on the Lipscomb University campus. Amen. But until then, just keep buying it at Kroger, Kroger uh, bring it in a brown paper sack, <laughs> stick it in your dorm refrigerator, and move on with life. <laughs> Third thing I need to correct is that you say on Wikipedia that I am trying to purchase a castle in Ireland. <laughs> this would be great for global learning. We would love to have a study abroad program in Ireland, and a castle would be a wonderful place to do it, uh, but frankly, that's not true. Uh, in fact, it's not true that I have purchased a castle. Uh, there already is a Lowry Castle in Ireland, because we're Irish. And I would love to purchase that, and I did make one attempt. I thought that I might try to sell High Rise as a down payment. <laughs> but then I found out there was no market for it, so uh, <laughs> that's not going to work out either. Last thing, it says that I really try to be involved with you as Lipscomb students, and I really do, and it says that one way I have kind of perfected that involvement is that I am the DJ at the annual dance, dance, called Paint the Herd. <laughs> the truth is, in spite of what happens after the running of the bison, in spite of what happens at the full moon festival, in spite of what happens in the bottom of the west garage, in spite of all of that, Scott McDowell keeps telling me this isn't true because we don't dance on the Lipscomb campus. <laughs> so correct your Wikipedia. Thank you for your help. I know that my reputation is intact if you're in charge. So thank you so much. Let's think about community for a couple of moments this morning and let's think about it in terms of really a phrase that I have used over and over and over again, uh, and you know it well, you're probably sick of it, but it's still very, very accurate. You can't be who you need to be if you remain where you are. And that's true of you as students coming to this school. It's true of your seniors who will shortly be leaving this school. And it's true of this institution as well. None of us can really fully be who we are if we remain where we are. We can't live in the past. We can't live in the present. We have to be looking at where we're moving in the future. And I think your institution is moving. And as community, I share this because we are all involved in creating here something that is very, very special, very, very meaningful, very, very impactful. All 6,000 students are involved in creating this community. All 900 faculty and staff are involved in creating this community. All 36,000 alumni are involved in creating this community, this thing we call Lipscomb. 
Uh, and you are doing a tremendous job. In fact, it's my humble opinion that we are moving to the very top of our game. And in some cases, we're moving to the top of anybody's game because of who you are and what you're doing. Last week, about 400 of you went on mission trips. You went on 22 trips to probably a dozen or two locations literally around the world. I have to admit it's a week that I'm a bit nervous. And as I got up early one morning and rode with some of you to the airport that were going to Mexico and Scotland, you know, my prayer is, Lord, just bring them home safely. And once again, the Lord did that. You've gathered back here after those weeks where you have served others, where you've stretched yourself, where you've been exposed, and where you have given very, very generously. And you make up part of the DNA, part of the soul of this community. If you were part of a spring break trip last week, stand up and let us recognize what you have contributed not only to us, but to the world. Stand up real quick. Beyond that, we are a community that seeks academic excellence. Uh, and there are many, many examples of that, but the one that is perhaps most profound this year is our College of Education. It's our second largest college. And it's a college that trains people to be teachers. In fact, in fact, we were doing some calculation the other day, and we decided that Lipscomb graduates in teaching come in contact with about 54,000 students a day. 54,000 students a day. And if you're part of this college, you're part of not an average or a mediocre college, you're part of an outstanding school. The state of Tennessee says it is the number one college in terms of teacher preparation in the state of Tennessee. And a recent national study said we're one of only four number one programs in the entire nation joining Vanderbilt and Ohio State and Furman University in that category. But it's not just that field, it's all of our fields where people are working diligently to say, how do we in an academic community not do something that's mediocre, but do something that is outstanding? Community engagement, there are too many examples to think about, but one person I think about is Kassar Abdullah. She started her life in Iraq and during the war there, saw many of her relatives killed and finally had to flee as a refugee to Turkey. From Turkey, she eventually got to the United States. From the United States, she eventually got to Lipscomb University. And she's distinguished herself as someone who has a heart for those who need to be welcomed, a heart for those who come into new communities as new people. She's been working diligently in Tennessee and particularly in Nashville to create that kind of atmosphere. And we were so proud of her when she was recognized by President Obama at the White House because he said she was one of those he characterized as a champion for change. Many of you could qualify for the same award. Athletics. Athletics are going extraordinarily well. We ended the fall semester uh, leading the ASUN uh, in the all sports trophy contest, and things have not slowed down a bit this spring. Our baseball team is doing outstanding after starting a season in the toughest way possible, losing five straight games. They've now won 14 out of 15, beating schools that are many, many times our size. Connecticut, Western Kentucky, Oakland, Austin P, Jacksonville, MTSU, Kansas State, and on and on. And our women's softball team is right there with them. Last week ranked 30th in the entire nation in a Division I program. Their record of 26 and 5 is outstanding, and they too have a list of schools much larger than we are that they come up against and have done very well, in fact, defeated. Miami, Tennessee State, Virginia Tech, Butler, Murray State, Belmont, North Florida, Ohio, and on and on it goes. These teams will be gone this week, but they'll be back next week. The women play on Tuesday, the men play on Friday. Come out and support what is our best year in Division I athletics to date. 
We also have dedicated faculty. I told you during Initium about them. These are people who have chosen to be involved in your life as your mentors, as your friends, as your faculty. I could talk about any of a number of them, but I think about Richard Good, who teaches in history and politics and was the one who started our program at the Tennessee Prison for Women that seven years ago began saying, students join me, we'll go to the prison, we'll offer a class there, and your classmates will be prisoners. And last December, we were absolutely thrilled as we stood on the stage of the gym at the prison, decorated like we could to make it kind of like commencement, and nine of those women walked across that stage. Or courageous students, folks that can make split-second decisions to do exactly what needs to be done. It happened just a few days ago, it happened on Friday, February 21st, an employee of of our hosting company, CSC, the folks that wear the kind of yellow windbreakers, all of a sudden fell in the apartment in the complex there, uh, fell from a massive heart attack and was laying on the cold concrete. And it was one of your classmates, a student, a student by the name of Michael Gad that, that saw what was going on and immediately went to work uh, and did CPR. Uh, our security people then arrived, the fire department then arrived, and this person who literally had been dead was revived several times on the way to the hospital. Uh, later that night, the physicians went to work and his life was saved. I was at the hospital about 10, 30 or 11 that night talking to his wife, who obviously was in tremendous shock about this moment, couldn't quite process the fact that her husband almost died three or four hours ago, and I could not have been prouder that it was a Lipscomb student who said, here is a moment and here's what I can do, and literally saved his life. Or I think about all of the recognition we receive, and I don't share that because we want to boast and be proud, but I want you to see that you're part of a community that is doing well, and it's not just Lipscomb folks who say that, it's folks that have nothing to do with us except to study who we are and how we walk this out. I'm thrilled that Affordable College Online says we're in the top 5% of the colleges in terms of the return on your investment. I'm thrilled that Payscale says we're in the top 20% of colleges in terms of your salary potential. I'm thrilled the Washington Monthly says this is a school where you get the best bang for your buck, the top 12% of the schools in the entire nation. And the list goes on and on. You've seen these various places. But they are objective people who analyze this community, the community you're making, and say things seem to be going well. But in reality, in reality, beyond all the awards and all the surveys and all the studies, what community is all about is about people. This kind of crazy gathering of people that somehow come together from all over the nation and all over the world to say, we're going to be a learning community. We're gonna be this academic community. We're gonna be a spiritual community and we're going to make something very, very special. And it happened again just a couple of weeks ago. You may have read about Kayla Montgomery. Growing up in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, attending Mount Tabor High School. Someone who is uh, a state champion in terms of distance running, just won the 3,200-meter race in that state and went to New York for the national indoor finals. But her story, as you know, is, is a little different. She's 18 years old now, but when she was 15 three years ago, uh, she began to realize that, that there were some funny feelings in her legs and they didn't work exactly right. And through all of the medical tests, they finally decided that at 15 years old, she had MS. And yet, and yet her sense was uh, that, that she was called to be outstanding in what she did, and so she kept running. Uh, you know the story because now when she gets to the end of a race, uh, she literally, her legs stop, and unless someone is there to catch her in their arms, she falls on the ground. Her legs have no feeling at all. 
And she said this the other day in an interview as she's been on Today and New York Times, a lot of places. She said this, and I think the quote is so instructive. She said, you know, I don't know how much time I have left, so I've got to run fast. I don't know how much time I have left, so I've got to run fast. The reality is you don't know how much time you have left. I don't know how much time I have left. But what a spirit that says, with whatever time I have, I've got to run fast. Well, you know the end of the story. People from all over the country, track coaches saw her and understood her, her times and wanted her to be a part of things. And then along the way, she felt she had to come clean and tell them that, well, she has MS, this del deliberate, very, very harmful disease. She said it was kind of funny. Everybody said it wouldn't matter, but nobody ever called back. Except, except a coach from Lipscomb University, Bill Taylor. And about two weeks ago, she signed her letter of intent and accepted her scholarship, and she will be one of your classmates next year. This is about community. At times in our community, things are really, really good. At times we have challenges and we recognize that, but we know there's something so special and we seek every single day to do it better and better and better. You know, I know you don't get involved in a lot of the things that some of us worry about behind the scenes trying to support your education, but for the last four years, we've been in what we call a campaign. Uh, we called it 2016, thinking about our 125th anniversary, and we made the decision in the middle of the recession that what we would do is raise $125 million to invest in your education. We would do that in six years, and we felt like that was a stretch coming out of that huge economic turmoil, and yet people committed to do it, and they've been out there working every single day. I'm going to share something with you that we'll announce more formally later, but the reality is by June of this year, a full two years early, through the generosity of 22,000 donors, we will have already completed that campaign. And so now what do we do? It's two years early. Things have happened much faster and much better. Well, we begin looking at the next six years. And we begin asking questions. You know, what is God requiring of us? What kind of institution does he want us to develop? How do we as a community look into the future yet again? How large should the goals be to accomplish what kinds of things? And so in the next few weeks, you'll hear quite a bit about something called Vision 2020. And the best words I can come up with to, to really describe it are these words. It's going to be something that's bolder and it's going to be something that's better because that's what we are called to be. And the next two or three weeks, we'll ask you as students to help us define that future. And there'll be a number of different forums, a number of different groups that work on this. There'll be the opportunity for every single one of you to say, Dr. Lowry, Randy, here's what I'm thinking. Put that into part of this large plan so we can be what we are called to be. And in advance, I appreciate all of you that will help us define the community we so love. In the more immediate future, a lot's gonna happen this summer. And I always try to just kind of update you on this so that when you leave for two or three months, if you do and come back, you're not completely surprised, but you're actually pleased with the progress. I do believe this summer we're going to start the McFarland Science Edition. This is about an eight and a half million dollar project. It's been frankly difficult to put all the money together for it, but I think we will have that done shortly. It will be three floors of brand new labs a building that's about 24,000 square feet. It's going to be an exciting place to study science, and obviously 40 or so percent of you do that. We're going to do some work on the SAC, and I hope you like this one. You know, one of the things we find is that 
Not everybody wants to walk to the third floor of the Azell Center to get a cup of coffee. And so we're going to take common grounds and bring it down and actually put a new uh, food service moment in the lobby of the Student Activity Center. And it will look out of the bell tower and the patios there and be something that you can go in and out of in a matter of seconds without going to the third floor of a building. We hope that will be a tremendous enhancement. We're going to be moving the School of uh, Computer Science and Informatics from where they are in trailers on the other side of the nursing building into the Swang Business Building in some of the most updated, exciting space that we can possibly build. Across the street, we've leased what you know as Pizza Perfect. And as a landlord, we said, what should go in there? And I'm pleased to announce that the well will be coming to Lipscomb University, or at least across the street. And uh, we have so much appreciation for their ministry. We have so much appreciation for the partnership in, in extending the body of Christ that we feel with them. And just the great way they do coffee, uh, that's going to be built in the next six or eight weeks and will be here when you return. We've asked Scott McDowell to do a comprehensive look at our whole residence hall situation. And we believe the very next project will be the construction of three more of the units that are in what you know of as the village. And they'll go in the north part of the campus, complement that very, very popular housing. We intend to build a new wellness clinic. This will go between Elam and the academy and be a place where you will be able to come for health care and wellness activities, making that extraordinarily sophisticated and extraordinarily convenient on our campus. We plan to break ground for a new civil engineering building uh, that will be essentially behind the clinic, uh, back where all those temporary buildings are. And yes, I hope that when you come back in the fall, we will have constructed the next 100 parking spaces on the north part of the campus. So let me conclude with this idea. And it's the idea I really like to have you take with you today. It's not the campus we build, it's the community we create. It's not the campus we build, it's the community we create. And I want to close by sharing something that may seem a little odd to you, but I want you to see how profoundly, how profoundly important it is. When I asked Scott McDowell to do some work on campus housing, uh, I said, why don't you hire a consultant? And I was a little surprised when Scott came back and he said, I've hired a consultant. I said, great, where's he from? And Scott said, Belmont. <laughs> now, I know today I'm dressed in Belmont colors. But before you accuse me of that, recognize these were America's colors first, okay? <laughs> Belmont just couldn't be very creative. Uh, and so they took red, white, and blue. Uh, but, but Scott said, he's coming from Belmont. I said, why Belmont? Well, he's a good friend. He's a colleague. I respect his judgment. I said, well, all that's fine. But you mean to tell me we're going to hire a consultant from Belmont to come tell us how to do student housing? Well, there's some logic in that. Belmont has spent gazillions of dollars the last decade building student housing. Uh, so he came, and he came and he looked around and he went through the places that many of you live, some of which are very, very nice, some of which are almost new, some of which are less than very, very nice and very, very old. And I was prepared for him to come back and give me this consultant's report, and he did. And he told me what he thought of this university in a way that I think is a tremendous compliment to you. He said, after looking at all you have here and recognizing not all of it is where you want it to be, he said, I I've got to tell you something else. I can't figure out why students come to Lipscomb. He said, I can't figure it out. I'm your consultant, but there are a lot of colleges they could go to wh where the dorms are nicer. From a student resident standpoint, I can't figure out why they come here. He said, well, at least I couldn't figure it out until I talked to them. 
And then it became extraordinarily obvious to me that your students come to this community in spite of the fact that some of the residence halls may not be all they could be. And he said that really puzzled me. Because see, I'm used to selling the latest in whatever in order to get a student to come. You don't have that, but students are flocking here. And he said, as I begin to talk to them, I begin to realize they're not coming to the dorm room, they're coming to what? The community. Prospective students walk on our campus uh, and, and I'll say, well, tell me what you're thinking. And they'll say things like, well, it just feels right. Say, so what does that mean? They say, well, I can't exactly describe it, but I've decided not to go look at any other schools. I'm coming to Lipscomb. And I think what it is, is the sense of who you are and what you do and what together we are seeking to create. For those of you who will senior, are seniors, we will, we will bid you farewell in just a few weeks. For those of you who will be back next year, we will continue with the effort we've been a part of for 123 years, and that's creating this community that is God-blessed and academically enriched and ready to prepare people who will literally go and change the world. Let's pray together.